I'm joined now by Shana Lowe, who's a communication advisor at the Norwegian Refugee Council, and she's joining us from occupied East Jerusalem. Um, we've been hearing a bit about a possible UN visit to northern Gaza. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about what this might entail and what benefits this might bring. I feel like some people watching might think, surely we don't need more information on how bad it is. What we actually need is action here. My understanding is that this uh, agreement is for a UN delegation to go and, and assess the damage and destruction in order for people to safely return to their homes um, and, and begin the reconstruction. The, there needs to be a removal of, of explosive remnants of war, which remain throughout northern Gaza. Uh, there needs to be the clearance of debris and and um, and removal of of that debris and 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 rubble. And and then there needs to be infrastructure rehabilitation in order uh, because because of course you know pipes, electricity are underground, and people need to have those restored in order to start rebuilding their lives. So. I don't know many details other than what's been been reported um, and and the the what Secretary Blinken said in his press conference yesterday. But this is understanding what is going what what the situation looks like at a micro level, not just on the grand scope uh, of of the level of destruction, but in terms of understanding which areas specifically need which types of rubble removal uh, and the removal of explosives. That's a necessary prerequisite to people being able to return to their homes. Israel, of course, continues to say that Palestinians who have fled to the south are not allowed to return north of, of Wadi Gaza. And so and, and we continue to be concerned about the the continuous calls from members of Israel's government, including government ministers, calling for the expulsion of Palestinians outside of Gaza, um, their forcible transfer. Obviously, this is a grave violation of international law, could even rise to the level of an, of an atrocity crime, uh, the most serious uh, crimes under international humanitarian law, if Palestinians are forcibly displaced and not allowed to return to their homes. And Shane, just a couple of follow-up questions on that. If this is about assessing the damage done, I suppose one question is, what's the point of doing that if there might be ongoing bombing of that? You'll be going there only for more things to get damaged, more munitions to fall. Is there any point in, in going there and doing that at this stage? And then my second question was, do we know when it might take place then? I have not heard anything about the timing yet of when this um, this uh, delegation will go and, and conduct their assessment or investigation. In terms of uh, Israel has indicated that that they will be shifting uh, and and refocusing their efforts and really reducing their presence in the north. And so I think we'll have to to wait and see. Of course, it, the the most important thing and the most important way to to stop this this killing, this bloodshed, these injuries, and the, of course, the tremendous devastation and destruction that we've seen throughout Gaza and, and in northern Gaza specifically, where as many as 80% of, of um, buildings are, are uninhabitable, uh, is, is to have a permanent sustained ceasefire. And really, that's what we need to continue to be pushing for. World leaders need to be continuing to push for it. We cannot continue to allow Israel to continue to, to, continue to bombard, bomb, destroy the Gaza Strip. So much devastation and destruction already. And so you're right. In order, if, if we're going to be doing these assessments, we need to ensure that these areas will not sustain further damage or destruction. And, and that is why we need to continue pushing for, for a ceasefire. It's the only way that we as humanitarians can go and, and do our jobs uh, and, and provide assistance to people in need, both because we don't want to be providing assistance that will then be subsequently be destroyed, but also we need to guarantee the safety of our staff and, and our partner staffs in order to be able to access those areas and ensure that they won't be targeted. We're seeing this already where you where UN convoys have been targeted uh, or, or denied access to areas in desperate need of medical supplies in the north um, because it simply isn't safe. And we as humanitarians, it's impossible for us to do our jobs under the circumstances as they are today. 
Okay, understood. Shania Lowe from the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you so much for that update and that information there. Really interesting.